Hi, it's Ray from Pro Shape Workshop. My voice is off a little bit. I got a cold. One of my workers, Brian, came down with the cold. Everybody's got a cold. But Tim doesn't have a cold. Tim is from Australia, and he's going to be here for 37 days. So let me introduce you to Tim. He's from the west coast, south of Brisbane in, in Australia. I had East Coast. East Coast. East Coast. <laughs> East Coast, yeah. Perth is on the <laughs> that, On coast. the West Coast, that's yeah. right, yeah. Hello. Um, yeah, doing a Churchill Fellowship and, yeah, here with um, Ray to do that. Um, and, yeah, I've been sent across for 370 hours or 37 days. And, um, yeah, quite the challenge ahead of me and looking forward to learning a lot. I was hoping to have him work on the Maserati project or I got the 1948 Studebaker Virgil Excellent project. And I said, oh, my God, those are really going to go forward. But now there's another guy coming. It's a week from now. The class starts. He's also from Austra uh, New Zealand. And then there's another guy from Australia, too. So we got some challenges for the Canadians now. Tim says to me, hey, because I won this uh, prize money, the Churchill Prize, which is awarded... Uh, not that often. What every other year or so, or yeah, not many automotive ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, basically, it's for f further study. Now he did take uh, a class. Uh, was it right out of high school? Took a class. A bit later, yes. And, and uh, piano beating. Yeah, panel beater. Yeah, okay. And uh, I asked him how many hours did he actually have on the English wheel? Oh, a total of only about 10 here. Okay, so he had about 10 hours on the English wheel. If the instruction was good, 10 hours is really good, but he really hasn't done anything since then. Not. But he's got a lot of ambition. So he surprised me that because of the Churchill Prize, he has to have a project that he brings back to Australia. And I says, well, what are you going to do? And he says, well, I bought a car, but I have it shipped to your shop. I says, what'd you buy? He says, a 79 Firebird with T-tops. And I said, well, oh, my God. It's going to be a rust bucket. Who wants to work on a rust bucket? So it delivered today from Kentucky, and it's right behind us, and we're going to go over and look at the car. So here's the car, 79. Of course, it... it uh, was described as a really nice car, and it was a big surprise when we saw it. There's, uh, there's been a little bit of a hit on the front. It's not super severe, but it's got your typical quarter panel rust. Rockers are gone. The door bottoms are gone, and there's dents and, and dings all around it. And But, it, you know, after you absorb it for a while, it does have this elegant beauty about it. And this was the car that they used in the movie, uh, what was the name? Smokey and the Bandit. Smokey and the Bandit. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it's got some cultural history to it and everything. It's actually a pretty cool car. So I, I, all day I've been absorbing the car. So I looked at it and I goes, okay, let's well, do a typical patch panel repair here. Well, let's do this. So I says, no, it's kind of boring. You know, we're going to cut that off. We're going to find the, the inner structure. Panel is all rotted. We'll have to make one of those up and... You probably can buy these patch panels. So what is Tim going to learn? I'm going, geez, he came all this distance. He's got to learn how to fix a rot box. I says, no, there's got to be a different way. And I'm looking at the car, you know, the car is really cool. So I says, why don't we do this? And he immediately accepted when I, the, the vision I had because he's working on these uh, the Japanese cars. GDR Skylines, yep. Yeah. And those, he said, had aluminum front ends, aluminum doors too? Uh, not doors. They have aluminum front guards and hood. Okay. So, yeah. The whole front nose is all aluminum on those. I says, well, that'd be a cool thing. We can change this car and make it into a one-off by throwing a lot of aluminum at it. So what do we want to do? So I came up with this idea, and Tim accepted it right away, which is really cool. So straight off the bat, um, I picked up that there were some repairs that were needed just under the front. It's had a slight hit in the radiator support panel um, that's going to need to be pulled. Trying to mirror up this shape on the front bump is going to be quite interesting in aluminium. These guards, they're going to be changed across to aluminium. The door skin, aluminium again. And then going into doing just um, traditional steel patch repairs in the back in the rust areas. And again, working on the roof, there's a section up there 
that's got a massive low spot in it. So just a bit of work up there. More aligning the panels back on the boot area. So the boot's a little bit pushed forward. Rear beaver panel. Doing the rear bumper as well in aluminium. Or aluminium. <laughs> on this side, it's got a bit of damage. Um, again, patch paneling and a bit of rust. So patch paneling through these sections, just the traditional way. So nothing too flash there. And then going back onto this door skin again, the internal structure will still be steel and then put something in between to separate it for stop galvanic corrosion, but putting like the aluminium uh, skin on the outside. And then aluminium again on the front guard. And then, yeah, basically leave the leave the hood the same with the big screaming chicken. Yeah, pretty, says what it is, stands out in Trans Am. So yeah, I'll keep that. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, yeah, old patina. Yeah, it looks fantastic. Keep watching in. We're gonna be making a lot of videos on this front end. It's Ray and Tim from Pro Shape Workshop in Charlton, Massachusetts. Thanks for watching.